I just wanted to do a follow-up video to my the one talking about music um, I just wanted to say that like anything before the impressionistic kind of era it just kind of was mostly boring to me because and just it makes it's hard to listen to for me because so much of the stuff before then that we have records of that we have recordings made of um had so many rules in society religion ruled so much and a lot of chords were considered evil a lot of progressions were considered evil you can't follow this note with this note lots of these rules that were everywhere that when I end up listening to the music of those periods it's just like oh man that's just painful the rules the rules are painful and that might seem weird but I just I just end up thinking about the way, how people had to live and and as a musician having to be held back that much where you just the notes and the, you, you, the, the idea of being held back in what notes and chords that you can use just is just like oh man so once we were able to get past that period you know I I can really start to get into the to the instrumentals um now Bach Bach was an anomaly to me Bach it wouldn't matter what rules were put in front of him he would come up with something amazing uh, he, he can take these just these amazingly complex patterns and then throw that same pattern but just modified in just such a way and apply it all over the place with different instruments and different parts of the song there could be this one pattern still and then when you wee we 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 back up yeah when you really back up and look at the song as a whole you'll sometimes see that that one pattern you heard at the very beginning is actually the pattern that the whole song overall is laid out so it's a pattern within a pattern within a pattern within a pattern with it I mean it's just like yeah that's that's some cool stuff I mean it's like looking at a fractal or something but it's music you know that guy just had an amazing mind it was just like wow um so you know there's 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 things like that when it comes to the the, the older music but you know when you get into the later stuff is Shostakovich Mazorgsky Stravinsky Debussy um uh uh oh I'm missing some but I mean you know that's when it really started to get interesting to me you know um and yes, Stravinsky is just the past hundred years, but I mean, still, uh, it, it, that's when really it really started get to get interesting because we didn't have those rules. I mean, I think about the fact that that when the Rite of Spring was first performed, um, uh, he barely made it out of of the place alive. It started a riot, you know, because it was just, it, and that's even just in these past hundred years. Um, I can't remember the exact year that 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 performance happened, but you know, it's. So we've come a long way as far as accepting different sounds, but you know, as far as pop music, we still have never really went that experimental tonally in pop music. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I would just love to hear some group, I mean, even though it'd be this looping section, but I'd just love to hear someone do it just to try taking a... Uh, Let's take a loop from something from Rite of Spring, one of the more complex sections of Rite of Spring, and, and loop it, and then find a way to put rhythm to it, and then, you know, base something off of something like that. If people are having to sample older stuff anyway, then what happens if they sample something that's really complex like that, and then try to build something over something complex? Well, you probably won't see it. Um, people really are... The majority of people really are only able to handle a certain amount of complexity. So, to me, to me, there's a way, there's a way that you can introduce complex things in a way that sounds simple. And to me, that's like, that's a key to getting people to open to new 
types of music is if you're able to accomplish something like that. Um, but uh, anyway, um, as I think I said in my one, that last video about music, I, you know, my favorite era of music in general, I mean, just most of the stuff that came out, most of the stuff that got radio play from, you know, around 66, 67 to, um, I initially said, you know, 78, but I should just really go to, um, about 84, 85. Um, you know, if I, if I take out the, the rock element of the 80s. You know, that sec that period, you know, 67 to 85 was just really, really great. Um, and I was born in 73, so it's just, you know, weird that I go further back, you know, into the 60s. But, you know, to me, before 67, it, things were still pretty held back and very conventional. Um, so... But then again, that period, that, 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 that section that I say I like so much, there was convention to that too, but I guess it's the fact that it was laid back. I still love that element, this, this, I don't know. I, I, I'm hoping there's going to be some sort of new resurgence of a laid back feeling, but I don't think that's going to happen until we actually feel that way as a society. So... I'm, I'm, I'm wishing for a sound that really can't happen because of our society, because of where we are in this point in history. Um, but, uh, yeah, between 85 and about 90, um, I didn't really find much, there, there wasn't really much good music to me in that period. That was a really bad period to me. Just, they're just, ugh. Um, don't get me wrong, there was exceptions, don't get me wrong, but <laughs> the 90s, the the real gem of the 90s was rock. Alternative rock, they called it. It's when we finally broke free of the glam and over-the-topness of rock from the 80s. It's like, okay, let's get to back to the business, let's get back to being raw. And then it started to build up into, well, now let's, you know, we, we know Raw, now let's build up to being maybe just a little... People decided, well, there's nothing more we can do with Rock. We can't do... let's leave the rebellion part out of it because when you're a lot of the rebellion musically has to do with doing something that is against the grain doing something that goes against convention and when, and when people, um it's no longer rebellious that's what I mean by rock has lost its rebellion. That's that's what I mean by it. It's it's there's n nobody is doing anything that that goes anything against any grain. It's that part is just gone. Um, I mean, right now, if some band, if some rock band came out doing something laid back, that would be more rebellious than the harshest of speed metal or death metal you could ever hear. It's actually more rebellious than that because it's going against, it would be going against the current grain. So, man, I hope this video works because I'm seeing it all clicky. Clicky, that's not the right word. The, 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 the frame rate on my side is getting really nasty, so I'm hoping this video will work. But, you know, I... I and again, I, I listen to the music from all over the world. Some of my favorite artists, I guess, it's just going to be hard. I mean, I just, like Goldfrapp uh, and uh, Simon and Garfunkel and uh, Bjork, Radiohead, Pink Floyd, uh, um, uh, 
God. It's funny when 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 I try to think of the artists that I like, it's just like it's like when someone asks you, oh, what CDs you have in your collection? It's like okay. Um, here, give me this list immediately. Give me give me this list of these things. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, but shoot, um, got Deanna Warwick. Uh. Uh, George Michael, Elton John, uh, um, Pop Workshop, uh, King Crimson, Yes, Old Yes, um, Heart, um, uh, Erasure. I'm just mentioning random stuff now. This is not interesting, so um, I'm going to end the video.